So good day, everyone. Good day, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another data section brought to you by your visage. So for today's session, we're having a special guest by the name of Baba Tokwe Samuel Adoye. We'll be taking us on the topic, easy approach to automating amortization debt schedule. So this session is brought to you by the collaboration between the Financial Model Institute and also your visage. So for some of you that will be interested in taking some financial modeling professional exams, such as AFM, CFM, and MFM, you can actually go online and read more about Financial Modeling Institute. They're one of the most recognized institutions for writing financial modeling exams. And for us, your visage, we all know about a training company in Lagos, Nigeria. We also have training in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Sarkov, all of our branches all over there. Um, we are known for, we well, registered Microsoft Excel Consulting, Financial Modeling, Business Intelligence, Data Analysis, and Enterprise Solution firm in Nigeria. We also specialize in helping companies and high value professionals be on top of the business data. We are also the developer of some financial tools which you can find on Microsoft Office tools, such as the Nigerian Finance Market Analysis tool, and also the developer of the Nigerian Stock Analysis Dashboard. As you all know, we are also a training company in, in Lagos, Nigeria also. So this is our calendar for our upcoming training. So on the 7th of March, we'll be having Python for data analysis. On the 10th of March, we'll be having in-depth Excel training, executive dashboard and business data analysis. And also on the 14th of March, we'll be having in-depth Excel training, executive dashboard and business data analysis also. Um, so our special guest, um, Baba Tope Samuel, is actually a professional, okay? So Baba Tope is, uh, is, a, is an economics, a financial analyst and also an SDG advocate. Baba Tokwe is also a financial professional with over three years of combined experience as a financial officer, financial analyst, and also a corporate trainer. He is a curious learner and passionate about teaching. He has trained over 500 top executives in finance, Microsoft Excel, accounting, and also financial modeling. So no further ado, I will hand over the session to Baba Tokwe. So Baba Tokwe, over to you. So stop sharing my screen right about now. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Timidayo. And thanks to Michael as well. Thanks for giving me this platform to actually communicate the little that I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I've also joined a couple of um, webinars before that is being hosted on this platform. And it's good to now be one of the facilitators today. All right, so thanks to everyone of us. I mean, everyone of you that is joining me today. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. And um, today I'll be just taking you on the topic, easy approach to amortizing, to automating and amortization debt schedule. It's going to be an interesting session that you're going to learn. Yes, there are really a lot of things that you're going to learn. Of course, when it comes to debt, debt is uh, one of the sections that you build in your model. And in fact, in financing any business, talk of any business that you want to do, either you make use of uh, maybe the cash that you have, more like a working cash, or maybe you issue equity, right? And uh, you have those equity and um, debt can also come in. And then this debt as well, there are different repayment um, form, right? It comes in different um, forms in which you repay this debt. And this is what we'll be looking at today. Um, so Timida has introduced me. Me, my name is Baba Tope. I'm an economics corporate trainer and also a financial analyst. I work with um, the brand consulting actually. So what are the things that we'll be looking at today? So today I'll be starting with the concept of um, debt, right? I'll be looking at what is even the meaning of debt. And then I'll look at the forms of um, debt repayment as well. And, uh, you know, any debt schedule that you actually want to build, of course, there will be some element, there will be some key things, or let me say ingredients that you need to build that debt. Then we have a demo session where I take you through practical uh, steps to building a debt schedule. And then while doing that demo, we're going to be looking at different finance function, functions as well that I will be using. And um, we also try to do some custom formatting in Excel. Of course, you know, we still build our model in Excel. Although some people use Google Sheets and all of that, but then we still use um, Excel and then we have question and answer at the end of the whole session. But before I continue, I would like to ask you, how many years of experience for those who are on the call? Okay, maybe I should even start with this. Are you aware of financial modeling? Just type yes or no in the chats. Are you aware of financial modeling? If you are aware of financial modeling, just type yes. If not, just type no. Okay, I can see Timidayo, Frederick, 
for large image three of you yes All right i think we have some orders on the call so please you can just type yes or no if you are aware of financial modeling all right okay so maybe we just continue with okay me yes as well all right for those who have experience um, in financial modeling that means that you've built couple of models or maybe a lot of models before maybe a financial model an economic model or any type of model that you've built so my second question will now be how many years of experience do you have building models you can just type in the chat maybe one or two or three how many years of experience do you have building models How many years of experience do you have building model? Maybe it's just one, two, <laughs> okay, Frederick, less than one. Okay. I want to hear from others as well. How many years of experience do you have building models? Okay, Timmy, that I said he's still learning. And and um all that image he said small models and um he said uh five years of experience okay that's fine it's just to know my audience and then to know those i'll be engaging with so that by the time i start the demo i'll be able to carry everyone along so very quickly let's dive in into the session we have a lot of things to cover starting from the meaning of debt so i want you to go to the chat and tell me when you hear of debt what is the meaning of debt to you what is the meaning of debt so i'm a trainer right so i tend to engage with my participants so i want you to just type in the chat what is the meaning of debt to you and i don't know if the audience can also unmute their mic as well if you have the opportunity to do that you can also unmute your mic and speak yes everyone can mute you can unmute yourself and speak Okay, all right. So please, um, I think you have the opportunity to unmute your mic as well. So you can just unmute your mic and tell me what is the meaning of debt. Okay. All right. So Frederick is saying that debt means something that that is being owned to someone. Okay. And then all the image says it is like a loan with fixed interest. Okay, I'll need more definition, then I'll proceed. Okay, Anthony is saying that when you borrow money from someone, okay, that's fine. All right, I'm also going to give you maybe a simple definition as well. Now, okay, so Tim is saying that in finance, debt refers to money that is borrowed and must be repaid with interest. Okay, I love the word must. All right, although do at times, at times, you know, let's say for example, uh, I have um, a wife, right? And then my wife borrows money from me. Now that's also a debt, right? And then it's, I mean, she might not even have to pay interest on it. But at times I may tend to give my friend money now. So it's also maybe a form of debt, right? Yeah, so it may not also come in form of uh, maybe, am I not maybe, charge interest on it but then uh, of course you are absolutely right now when it comes to debt debt comes in a way in which you are to it, it's it's a form of you financing your business right you have to borrow money maybe from the bank or maybe from individuals to to find or institutions as well to finance your business and this can come in, in different forms and i term these maybe three major forms of um, you now repaying that particular debt and the first one is the amortizing debt repayment. What do I mean by amortizing debt repayment? Now, any debt that you have, of course, there will be the amount, right? There will be a principal repayment, and also there will now be an interest that you have to pay on it. Because, of course, the person that is giving you a loan, there will be a charge, more like an interest rate on that particular loan. So when it comes to amortizing debt, or maybe you call it amortization loan, that is the type of loan that requires monthly payment with a portion of um, the principal as well as the interest as well. So amortizing loan, you can see it as a type of loan that you spread the repayment across or the duration 
of the loan right and then it gives a kind of um, maybe uh, flexibility as well and then this could also come in two different forms it can come in a situation whereby you have to pay your principal just you have an equal principal but then the interest expense that you'll be paying is going to be it's going to vary right so you have just an equal principal and then this is very very easy to model because all you just need to do is to divide the total amount of loan by the duration of the loan or the period of the loan right and then the interest expense will now be charged on the beginning balance or the ending balance of your loan and then the second one is a situation whereby you have to pay equal amount so you, so so it's a situation whereby by the time you add put your principal and your interest together then you have to pay you will now have to pay an equal amount throughout the duration of the loan and this is what we'll be looking at and then we'll look at ways in which you can automate this as well in your model and second type is uh, balloon debt now this balloon debt some people also call it a um, bullet debt right the situation whereby you have to pay the lump sum at the end of the loan right that is why they call it a balloon debt so you just pay the lump sum at the end of the loan and then for this type of um, loan the advantage of um, taking this type of loan is because it's quite um, flexible you don't have to pay pay the principal and the interest on an annual basis right you can you can be paying maybe a, some, a part of the interest expense right you can just be paying a periodic expense annually that is on an annual basis you pay an interest expense but then at the end of the whole duration of the loan then you pay the lump sum at the end but then the disadvantage of this is that i mean it's quite risky now i give you an example now i know that rent comes in form of a prepayment you have to prepay for your rent but then let's use rent as an example now if for example your rent is maybe 400,000 era on an annual basis that means that by the time you take, I mean, you pay for that particular rent. Now, that means you, maybe you have to be saving bit by bit to the end of the period. But then what often happens is that people don't save, right? I mean, before that, uh, they have to repay uh, for the next uh, rent. It is maybe by time, maybe you have to pay your, your rent, maybe around April, or you have to pay in May, or maybe November, as the case may be. That is when you now see people now start running around, and then maybe start calling people that oh i please borrow me money and i want to pay my rent i want to do this at this also particular point so it makes it actually to be very very risky right so one of the biggest problem is that uh, many borrowers they do not make proper arrangement to be able to make the balloon debt repayment and the last one which i'll be talking about is uh, the capitalized debt repayment when you talk of capitalized uh, debt repayment or you call it capitalized interest debt repayment uh, the interest is being added to the principal balance of the loan and then it generally increases the amount of a fixed asset in your balance sheet and we can look at this as well in such a situation whereby the interest is not separately paid out in cash but then it is used to increase the loan amount now when it comes to accounting rights uh, capitalized interest they are often accrued when constructing your long-term assets of course i just want to give you just a background knowledge of uh, the different forms of uh, debt repayment this is not what we really want to do we are going to be doing uh, the calculation bit but then i want you to if someone is asking a question that um, please can i take the capitalized debt repayment again so i said i can see that capitalized debt repayments as a situation whereby the interest is added to the principal balance of the loan right so that means that the interest is not separately paid out in cash but then it is used to increase the loan amount right so we then look at the elements of a debt schedule so i want to ask you whenever you want to maybe model debt what are those elements what are those ingredients that you need to model debt you can type in the chart what are the elements that you need to model debt All right, thank you, Frederick. Frederick is saying that interest rates, or the major is saying that um, interest rates and then loan tenure, which is similar to maybe the loan period. Yes, or the major is also saying that the principal, maybe you can talk of uh, maybe the principal amount. Yes, another person. 
what are the elements, what are the uh, ingredients that you need to model your debt? What are those things that you need, right, before you can you can model debts? Okay, um, Sadiq is saying that the opening balance, the drawdown, more like maybe there's new issuance and all of that. Okay, so let me just pop that out. And then I categorize this into major elements and then sub elements, right? That's how I've categorized it. Now, you need to have maybe the debt amount, right? What is even the amount that you want to borrow? Oftentimes, when you work on uh, maybe a project finance model, you might say, okay, the amount that you're going to be using to finance this loan will be maybe 70%, right? Of the total amount. Some people might say, okay, 30%. And then you now look at a ratio of your debt to equity right so you of course there was going to be the actual amount also there's going to be maybe rate of interest or you call it the interest rate right more like a charge on the loan and um, there's also the period or you call it the tenure of the loan or the timing of the loan and that is in situations like these um, when it comes to project finance modeling uh, you often build um, a timing in your model right where you have to do timing we're going to do maybe a bit of small uh, timing mask and flag uh, today just a small one but then when it comes to complex model right you have to build a detailed timing into your model then you can also have the loan details as well right when be you talk of maybe what is the description of the loan where are you getting the loan from is it from the maybe from bank of industry or maybe you're getting the loan from maybe uh, anybody right you can just have details of the loan then i now have some sub elements as well now this sub element this are this is what i call maybe you have the principal repayments you have the interest expense and then of course the beginning and the ending balance of the loan all right so now let's dive into the demo and i'm going to be opening a blank excel i'm going to be opening a blank excel i'm going to be opening a blank excel Right, so I have my blank Excel, and then we're now going to uh, build a, uh, a debt schedule. A debt schedule. Now, oftentimes when I build a model as well, I try to also do my formatting from start. Right, I mean that's the beauty of um, building a professional model. So oftentimes I uh, will just have to go to. So I'll be using some shortcut as well, and then I'll also ensure that I tell you those shortcuts so that you'll be able to follow along as well. You can also open a blank Excel along with me so that we'll be able to build this together. Now, what I want is that I want to have something like a title here. So often and then I want to do a color field. Now, what most people do is that they will just come to their home and then they'll come here, then they do a field. But then I don't want to do this. I want to do it in such a way that it is dynamic. So that maybe after building the model, I can always maybe reuse the templates or maybe if my client says that, oh, what I've done that I mean they want to change this color, I can always go back to I can always go back to my model and then just easily update that so oftentimes i make use of sales ties so I'll, all i need to do is just to go to my sales ties and to go to sales ties i make use of the short course is alt h and j alt h and j now because at the moment i can't find um, the particular one that i want to use so what i'm going to do is to create a new sales tie and i'm um, creating that new sales tie basically what i need is that i just want to do a color field that is basically what i need so i'm just going to call this uh, maybe banner it's going to call that banner and there may be fonts as well then i'm going to now click on formats then when i click on formats i want to do a color fill maybe i'm just going to select this third one uh yeah maybe i just select maybe the third one or the fourth one either way and um for the font as well i need the color white so i just need a white color then we can just leave it as 11 no troubles then i click on ok then i click on ok so here i can just come back here and then just just highlight to the right and then press alt h and j and then i can select my banner and then click on ok and that's about it so i'm just trying to create a template for my loan schedule that's what i'm doing at the moment so and then maybe here i can just type in dynamic so i can just say dynamic dynamic loan amortization Okay, so my spelling there, uh, dynamic loan amortization schedule, right? And then what I'm going to be doing today is that we have uh, 
I'm going to build for a single loan and a situation whereby you have multiple loans as well, right? So how do you tend to automate it when you have just a single loan as well as when you have multiple loans? So we'll be starting with the single loan. So I'm just going to say single loan, right? I'm just going to say single loan. And um, uh, for my input as well, so maybe for the uh, times I'll need an input style, so I can just come here and then modify my input style as well. I don't like this um, color. So oftentimes I often I try to change that as well. So I'll just come here and um, for the field, um, for the fonts, maybe I'll use a blue. Maybe I'll use a blue for the fonts and then for the field. Um, oftentimes I try to use a blue, try to use a blue. Then um, number inputs so maybe i don't need that so let me just um for the i don't need this i'll just need maybe a border and then a field right so i'll just come to the border i need it to be black and then all outline okay so i said i need it to be black and then all outline and i click on ok and i click on ok and i also want to format my normal style as well so i'll just do i'm just trying to do some kind of um, housekeeping before i proceed so for the number um, so i don't need the for the normal style i don't need this i don't need this i basically at times i may need this i don't need it as well but then let me just go to, slightly to the number style then um, i can just come to number i want thousand separator i want uh, my negative to be in red i can then continue to the custom is there another thing that I need? I think that's about it. Then I click on OK, then I click on OK. I think I've done a bit of um, housekeeping. So the next thing I need to do is just to say my loan details. My loan details, and then I can just bold this and then do country U. And then so the other time I said we have some elements of um, debt, right? So here, let's say I have them um, amounts, amount, and then let's say we have the rates rates and then um at times um, amortization debt it could come in maybe a monthly repayment or maybe an annual repayment as well but for this let's do a monthly repayment and by the time i'm now doing the multiple uh, loan then we're going to use um annual repayment so here i'm just going to say month right i'm just going to say month now here i want to bring out my never sign now there are ways in which you can come up you can bring never uh, never sign in maybe when you're working with a windows or you're working in excel now at times people can tend to format it so that um, you try to do an auto correct so that when you type ngn then you have the narrow sign but then there's also a way in which you can get uh, all the symbols right any symbol that you want to ever work with there's a way you can do that and then the shortcut to doing that is just pressing window full stop right so that's what i'm going to do now I, i'm just trying to do some kind of um, housekeeping just to make sure that okay the amount was the currency was currency type so i'm just going to press window and full stop now when i press window and full stop you see all the emoji i mean all the uh, symbols that you can ever come across so i'm just going to select an error then i will do maybe i want it to be in um, thousands so i'm just going to press three zero and then I'll close bracket and I'll press in. Okay, so let me just close it. Now I want to make this an input style. So I'll just say Alt H J, and then I'll select the input. So I want you to tell me what is going to be the amount of the loan. Just just type in the chat. What should we use as the amount for the loan? The loan amount. Just type in the chat. What should be the loan amount? Maybe twenty million. Okay, twenty million. So if you say twenty million, that will be twenty thousand, right? one two three and press enter right yes yes okay all right now let's go to the rate as well right so i'm just going to say percentage i will close the bracket and then i will also bring this up uh, my style and then of course i need um, maybe at times I, at times i also tend to format my rate as well the rate but then uh the, that that is the percent style but then let's just continue because of time so that we'll be able to complete every other thing that we need so for the rate what interest rate should we use so what interest rate should we use can i just type in the chat what interest rate should we use interest rates Okay, so we said 11%, so I'm just going to type 11% there, 
Um, so let me just format this as a percentage. So I use country shift and five for that. And then for the month as well, maybe month is going to come in form of um, values, right? Yeah, so it's going to come in form of values. Then I press put HJ and then I make it an input style so that. And then uh, oftentimes when uh, people, when people build models, right? So what they just do here is either they say five, and then they come here, they type month. No, don't do this. Also, at times two, people will, instead of typing five months here, they'll just type five, and then they do control one, right? Control one is for num uh, format cell, and then they go to custom, then they erase the all of these, they erase the all of these. So let me just erase the all of these, and then I type um, zero, zero, so that I'm just gonna have my number, then they'll have months, then, they click on OK. Now with this, if I type eight, then I have eight months. But then, uh, let's say for example, I type one here. Now it's still going to give me one month, right? But then there's nothing like, okay, there's nothing like one plural form. That is one, right? And then if I type zero, it's still saying zero months. So I want the situation well by, when I type one here, I want it to give me just one month. And then if it is two, that is when it is more than one, I want it to give me uh, two months, right? So there's a way you can do this in Excel as well, right? So, I mean, I said professionalism when you're building your model. So one thing that I can do is that you're now going to do a kind of a custom formatting. I call it advanced custom formatting in, in Excel. So what I'm going to do is that I will just press control one then I will now come here I can erase the all of this so it's, it's just similar to you writing your just similar to you writing an if um, statement in Excel so I'm going to use my left square bracket then I will say my number I will say when you're less when you are less than less or equal to one that is anytime any day that is less or equal to one I'll just close the bracket and I'll say it should give me it should just give me a uh, Months, right? I'll close the bracket. That is um, a quote, right? Rather, and then I will now write another function as well. I can just copy this. I'll copy this, then I'll come here, then I'll type it. And all I want to say is that when the number is greater than, so when it is greater than, when it is greater than, okay, so when it is greater than one, so I want the situation whereby it's going to give me a uh, month. So I will just say month. So when it is less than one, it gives me one. And then, okay, so let me remove this. Let me remove this as well. Yes. So right, so I'll be. So if I click on OK, then if I come here and then I type one, then you see that I have one month. If I type two, then I have two months. If I type zero, then I have just zero months. So basically, uh, how many months do we want this loan to be? So just type in the chart. How many months? So I'm waiting for your response. How many months do we? Oh, 60 months. Okay, all right, so let's just start with a small one. Then by the time we are now automating it, then we now make, uh, maybe we cannot type 60 months, but then for now, let's just use three months, right? So now I can now have something like uh, maybe my my headings, right? So I'll have something like period. So I have something like period. Then I'll have the beginning balance, beginning balance. Then I'll have my interests. Then there will be principal, principal repayment, principal repayment, my principal repayment. Then at times you may want to have a total repayment too. Maybe let me just write the total repayment as well. Let me just write it now, total repayment. Then uh, maybe an ending balance as well. And then half um, ending, ending balance, half ending balance as well. Right, and then maybe just for maybe some housekeeping, I can just make this a uh, banner style as well, right? I just did that. And um, for the period, since we said uh, for three months, so I want a situation whereby I can easily automate this, right? And then the function that I can use to do that is by using uh, sequence, right? Uh, although for those that do not have um, Office 365, you might not be able to use all these dynamic um, array functions in Excel, but then if you work with them, um, if you have Office 365, then you'll be good. So what I'm going to do here is that I will just say equals to sequence, equals to sequence, then I'm going to select this, 
I'll close the bracket and then I'll press enter. So here, if I change this to maybe two, I'll press enter, then I have two. If I change this to four, then I have four. If I change this to maybe five, then I have five, right? And then if I even change it to 60, if I change it to 60, then if I scroll down, then of course it's going to populate up to 60 for me. So if I scroll down, then you have um, 60. And then I can do some kind of um, housekeeping as well, right? I can just do some kind of housekeeping and then just press Ctrl Shift tilde. I just press Ctrl Shift tilde to change this thing to number. But then let's just keep it as uh, maybe um, three months, right? Let's just keep it as three months. Now for the beginning balance, the beginning balance will definitely come back to this beginning balance. Now for the interest, now there are some functions that you make use of in Excel to calculate uh, maybe the interest charge in a month. Then that function is called IPMT, right? IPMT. So what I'm going to do is just to say equals to IPMT, IPMT. And what IPMT is going to do for me is that it will return the interest payment for a given period for, of an investment based on uh, maybe the period, right? Uh, so what I'm just going to do is that I will say equals to IPMT. Then it has some argument as well, right? It has some argument. The first thing is asking me for the rate, right? What's the rate of the loan, right? So this is the rate. Now, because this is going to be, because this is going to be uh, a monthly repayment, so I'm just going to divide this by 12. Now, oftentimes people say that you should not add code in your model, but then 12 is something that is not going to change, right? You will definitely have 12, 12 months, right? I mean, any year, any time, any day in the year, you will definitely have 12 months, right? So I'm just going to leave it as 12 months, you understand? Then I'll put a comma. Then the period, what is the number? What is the current period that I am? Now, this is the current period. And then to now make it dynamic, right? I'm going to put H, right? I'm going to put H sign, right? H sign, then I'll put a comma. Then the next thing that is now asking me is that um, what is the total number of a um, period? Now, the total number of period is what I have here. Now, put a comma, then it's asking me what is the present value? That is the value of the loan, right? And then uh, when it comes to using all this um, finance function in Excel uh, or this IPMT or use PMT, now it comes with, it's, come, it's return negative. So one thing that you can do is maybe you just introduce a minus, then you select the value that you have here, right? Uh, every other thing that you have here, you may decide to leave it or maybe you include it as well. Now, it's asking for the crucial value. What's going to be the crucial value? So I can decide to say, okay, the crucial value should be zero. And then it's also asking for maybe what is the type of the loan as well? Is this something that will be repaid maybe at the end of the period or beginning of the period? I may decide to leave this or also type something there. So I can just type zero. I'll close the bracket and I'll press enter. And then automatically I have my interest uh, repayment. Then I'll go to the principal as well. Now for the principal, the what you're going to use is PPMT now, right? That is principal repayment. It's also a function in Excel. So what I'm going to do is that I will just say equals to PPMT, PPMT. So that is going to return the principal repayment, right? For that particular period. And I'll say equal to, then it asks me what is the rate, right? Now this is the rate, right? This is the rate, but then I need to divide by 12. Then it's asking for the period. Right, so this is the period that I have. In order to make it dynamic, I will press H. Then it's asking for the number of period. This is the total number of period that I have there. Then I'm going to press a comma. Then it's asking for the uh, present value. So I'm just going to say minus. I'll select what I have there and I'll close my brackets. Then it's asking for the crucial value. I said you may decide to leave this or maybe type it as well. But for me, I'm just going to type the value. So I'll say 0, 0. I'll close the bracket, then I'll press enter. Right. So with this, I now have my interest and then I have my principal. So here, you know, I told you that it's going to be uh, the same amount, right? So the one I'm that we're taking now is a situation whereby you are going to have a total repayment, right? Throughout the period, so I can decide to now say equal to. I'll select the print the interest, then I'll just press H plus, then I'll select the principal, and I'll press H, then I'll press enter. Now, if you observe that across the period, throughout the period, what I have there is what is a total repayment, right? Remember when I was discussing about the amortization schedule, I said there might be situation whereby this principal will be constant. Now, in a situation whereby this principal will be constant, all you need to do is just divide this amount, 
by the total number of period. Now the interest rate will now be charged on uh, what is it called the ending balance of the previous same period, or you say the beginning balance of the current period. So that's how you're going to do it. Now for me to now get the ending balance, also there's also a function that I'm going to make use of to of in Excel, right? To to do that, and to do that, I'm going to make use of a function that is called comb print, right? Comb print. So what I'm going to say is that I'll say equals to cumulative. So it's more like you are saying that cumulative of a principal, right? That is what they call comb print. So it's cumulative of a principal. So I just say equals to comb print. Then it's asking for the rate, right? What's the rate of the loan, right? So the rate of the loan is this. This is the rate of the loan. And I will divide that by 12 as well, right? That's the rate of the loan. And then it's asking for the number of um, period. This is the number of period. Then it's asking for what is going to be the present value of the loan. What is the present value of the loan? I'm going to select this. Then it's asking for the start um, period. Now the start period is one, starting from period one. And then also the end period as well. So for this, I'm just going to make use of a sequence function. So to say sequence, then I'll select this because that is the whole lump sum of the loan. Then um, I can close the brackets. Then what other thing is it asking for me? Then it's asking maybe with the repayment be maybe at the end of the period or maybe at the beginning of the period. So I can just type zero and I'll close the bracket. I press enter. Now when I do this, yeah, of course, there's not a need for me to now deduct the, the actual amount so i'm just going to come back here and i'll come to the just right in front of this i will select this then i'll say plus and i'll press enter now you see that this is actually my uh the community principle more like the ending balance so that at the end of the whole loan period then it's going to turn back to zero now for me to now get the beginning balance now for the beginning balance you know when you build maybe your debt schedule right and then you now want to do a walk back for your beginning balance so all you need to do is just to say equal to then you select maybe you start from the principal then you put your arch plus then you add it to your ending balance then i'm just going to put arch and i press enter right and this is just it so at this particular period if you observe now at the beginning of the period so this is what they have then this was the repayment this was the total repayment and then this was the ending balance and then if you look at this as well this is this happened to be the beginning balance beginning balance right and then at this particular period this was the end of balance then at the particular period at the third period then you have um, this beginning balance then because it was fully paid then you have zero now in order to automate this now you know somebody was saying that okay you are done with the build of this now maybe you now want to change this to maybe 60 and see how it's going to play so if i type 60 here then i press enter and if i scroll down then you see that at the end of the whole period it turns to zero so this is just an e easy approach to automating this right so this is going to be what you're going to be paying throughout the period of the loan. Okay, someone is saying that I should repeat um, the beginning balance. So for the beginning balance, what I did is just uh, the principal plus the ending plus the ending balance. So the principal plus the ending balance. So let me just turn this to four. So the principal plus the ending balance, that is what I use for the beginning balance. But then, you know, take for example, right? Take for example, and I type zero here. Now, if I type zero here and I press enter, you see that I have calculate, 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 calculate. Now, you can tell me why do I have calculate here and how can I correct it? So the reason why I use the arch is just to, is just to make it um, dynamic, right? So, so arch is more like um, what you, you use to turn, turn, to turn it to an array function in Excel. So why do I have calculate and then how can I correct that? Um, I think you have calculate because um, some things are, your month is zero. So, um, okay. Yes. So I so think it's returning if I want to, this thing. So if I now want to correct it, what can I do? I don't know, maybe use the if error. <laughs> Okay, all right. So the best thing to use is to use if error. So I can just come here and I'll type if error. So I say if error. So when there's an error, whenever it's a counter error, I want it to return zero for me. Okay, so I can just close the bracket and I'll press enter. Then I'll come here as well. I will say no, so I don't necessarily need this for this. I can just come here and I'll say if you encounter error. If you encounter error, I want it to return zero for me. I'll close the bracket and I'll press enter. For these as well, I'll just do the same thing. I'll say if you encounter error, then I'll close the bracket. Then I'll say return zero for me. Then I'll press enter. 
but I will just do for the last one as well. I will just say if you encounter error, then what you need to do is just to return zero for me. I'll close the bracket and after. Okay, so I'll just press zero, and that's about it. So I can just come back here. If I type three, then of course I still have what I had before. If I type four, then I have what I had before. If I type five, then I have what I have. Now that's about it for the single loan. So we'll now be going to the multiple. We now be taking the multiple loan now, right? For the multiple loan, I still want so let me just rename this to single single loan. So I'm just going to change that to single loan. So I now want to have them um, for multiple loan. So I can just um, uh, so I think I should have done a template before, right? So let me just erase the all of these. Uh, so press Ctrl D to clear that. Yeah, and then I'll change this to multiple. Right? So I change this to multiple. I change this to multiple. So I want to do for a multiple loan now. Now that might be situation. I mean, the question that I now want to ask me that this is just a single loan amount. What if um, there are different loans that now com comes in, right? Maybe you have to collect loan maybe in 2016, you have to collect them in 2017, and then in 2019 as well, and that loan came in. How do you now build uh, such a, I mean, an amortization schedule for that? So the best thing to do, so I'm just going to re rename this to multiple multiple loan multiple loan um because of my time let me see how we can just manage this and then uh i just hope we're able to complete this actually all right so let's see that um, maybe i should come here um then uh, okay i can also start from here all right so of course there will be some elements right so let's say that i have a serial number i have um, maybe the loan description or the loan details Maybe loan description or loan details, uh, loan details, loan details, and then there will be an issue period, right? The time, the date in which the loan was issued, and then there will be a maturity period as well, right? Maturity period is when you are going to repay the loan, and then of course there's going to be an amount as well, right? An amount. I remember I told you how to bring out the NERA sign. You just by pressing window full stop, then I can easily come here, select the NERA sign. And then I can close this young guy and then uh, just close this. And then, of course, I need rate as well. Right? Rate. Okay. So I can decide to now make this um, a editing style as a banner style, rather. A banner style. And then to enlarge that, I'll just press Alt H O I. Right, just to enlarge that. So now for the serial number, now most times when people enter serial number as well, basically what they do is just to type one here, and then you can now say equals to this plus maybe one, and then you press enter. Oftentimes I don't really like doing this. What I just use is that I will just use roll, right? I will just say equals to roll, equals to roll. I'll close and open the bracket. Now because I'm on um, roll seven, so I'll just say that minus six, then I'll press enter. Right, and I will just change this to number for format. Then, so what? Are, how many loans should we build? Should we build? How many loans should we build? Just type in the chat. How many loan schedule? Okay, three. No, I need more. Like you can say ten. You can say maybe twelve. Okay, so what I just did is by pressing Ctrl Shift tilde. Okay, all right, so you said 12, right? So let's just do 12, right? So let's just do 12. So I'll press Ctrl D. Yeah, that's 12. Okay, so someone is um, like, oh, let's just do seven because of time, but then we can do 12, right? So now let's give them um, the loan details. So let's just let, let just call it maybe loan one, two, three, four, five, right? Because of our time. Uh, so I can just say loan one to loan 12. That is the name, but then you can always change this. Maybe Bank of Industry, uh maybe loan from Papa Tokbe, loan from or Olamide, loan from Frederick, loan from all of that. So now let's so uh I wanted to give me the issue period. So what should be the issue period? Just type in the chat. What should we use as the issue period? So just give me a random, a random, what should be the issue period so that we'll be able to fill in all the details here. The issue period for the loan. Issue period, issue period. Can type in the chat what should be the issue period yeah, that is when the loan will come in okay so i want i want uh, maybe 2016 2015 uh 2017 uh, something like that you know when you want to build a model you have your years right so i want this in that particular order maybe you're going to collect the loan maybe in 2020 or 2021 so that's what i want 
Okay, so because of time, I'm just going to say this is, should be 2016. So I will have found out for 2017. I can say 2017 again. And um, so say, let's say another one for 2017. Let's say 2018. Let's say another one for 2018. Let's say 2019. And then let's just say 2024, every other loan, right? So I can just say 2024, every other loan. And then I can just um, change this as well by pressing this and then maybe the maturity period as well. Let's say that the first ones we just mature, every other, all these ones we mature in 2020. So, uh, okay, uh, so this is quite unfortunate. It came in 2019 and then <laughs> it was fully repaid in 2020, but then that's fine. And uh, but then maybe we should just make it 2025, right? Just 2025. And then this maybe 2026. Right, 2026, and then maybe come down, and then maybe this coming in 2027, right? And then I can just press Ctrl D, and then the loan, the amount as well. Let's just say maybe this is 5,000, this is uh, maybe 2,000, let's say this is um, maybe 1,000, let's say this is 4, right? We can always update this data, so because of my time, let me just press Ctrl D for this. And then for the rate as well, let's say that um, I have maybe 3% for this. Let's say 3%, okay? So let me change it to 3%. 3%, let's say 2%, uh, 2%, 2%. Let's just, we can, it's something that we can always update later. So I'm just trying to be mindful of my time, all right? So now what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna come here just gonna come here. So because I want to make it um, to be dynamic, so I'm gonna la label this. So I'm just gonna name this. I'm gonna name this. So I can call this one loan heading. So I'm gonna say loan heading, and then I'll call this from here to here. I'll call it um, serial number. So I'll call this serial number. Then I'll press enter, and um, of course I have some loan details, right? So I'll just come here. I'll name this, and then I'll call it. Uh, my loan so let me just call it loan right and that's about it right so i think that's about it so i can just scroll down and uh, maybe yeah maybe yeah i'm just gonna have uh, my beginning or have a beginning balance let's say beginning balance then there will be principal principal repayment there'll be a principal repayment and then there will be ending maybe ending balance that will be ending balance as well, right? So what I want to do now is that I want the details of every loan, right? I want, I just want to see the details of each loan in front of um, one another. So basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just transpose, you know, I have the heading, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely that, that helps. So what I actually wanted is that I want it to be in two decimal places. So that's why I had to leave this. And then alternatively, what another thing I can do is just to do another uh, cell style for this as well. Yeah, that, that also helps. Yeah, but then I want it to be in two decimal places. So that's why I left it that way. Yeah, all right. So now I have this, I have this. So I just want to bring up, um, I just want to have the details of the loan. So I'll just say equals to transpose. I want to transpose the, is it loan heading now? Yes, loan heading. Then I close my bracket then I press enter. Now for here, I can just make this an input style. Now, of course, we have serial number one to 12, right? So yeah, I'm just gonna type one here. Just going to type one here. So because I will needed it in just um, two decimal places, so that's why I had to do that. Now for the loan details. Now what I'm going to use is that uh, at times you may use um, VLOOKUP, you may use um, index and match, but then I'm going to be making use of a combination of um, functions. I'll be making use of um, XLOOKUP, right? Transpose and XLOOKUP. So if I use XLOOKUP equals to XLOOKUP, XLOOKUP. Now what's the lookup value? This is my lookup value. My lookup array. That's the serial number. The serial number is the lookup array, and then what I want it to return is basically the loan, right? If I press the loan and I close my bracket and I press enter, then it's going to spill this way, right? But then because I want it to 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 transpose, I want it to be in a vertical form. What I'm going to do is just press and transpose. 
then I'll close the brackets here, then I'll press enter. Then just to put this into just uh, some kind of um, housekeeping, right? So I'm just going to do this and um, for this, I will just do this. And then for this too, I'll just change the percentage. And then I think that's about it. I can decide to put this in, in, in the board as well. by just pressing Ctrl Shift and 7. All right, so I think I have this now. Now I may want to do maybe my year as well. So let me just give you some space for the year. Let me just give some space for year, right? Some space for year. And then uh, maybe, um, so what's the lowest um, one that we have here? I think we have 20. 16. Let's even assume that okay, 2016 has happened. Let's just say that we want to start from 2017. So I'm going to type uh, maybe 31st um, December 2017 here. Yeah. 31st December 2017. Okay, so let me just uh, uh, so that's why open time I just try to do formatting just straight up uh, so so that I won't have to be coming just here and then uh, my time is really really running. And um, I can say equals to this, and then I'll say plus one, and then here as well. Maybe I'll make use of uh, maybe EO months or E dates either way, right? So let me just use uh, equals to EO months. I'll just use EO month, that is end of the month. Then this is the start date. Then how many period of month that is 12. Then I'll press enter. Then I can change this as well. So I can just come here, come to my home. And then click on the format painter. Then I'm just going to select these two. Then I can then decide to highlight it right. What's the last thing there? That's 20, 20, 27. Okay, so I think I need one more. Then I'll press Control R. Then I can just enlarge this, and that's about it. Okay, so just to bring it back to focus, uh, just to bring it back to focus. So since I have this now, then I think I can I can start building uh, the loan schedule. I have all the details that I need, so I can start um, working on what I need. So maybe I'm going to start with the principal repayment, right? The principal repayment. Now the principal repayment. Let's say that uh, of course I want to start with the principal repayment. So what I want to do is that of the I told you the function earlier. So you're going to say equals to uh, PPMT equals to PPMT. Then what is the rate? So anything I'm picking, because I want to automate it, anything I'm picking from this particular uh, table, I'm just going to, I'm going to reference the, I'm going to keep the column constant, and anything that I'm picking from here, I'm going to keep the role constant as well. So for the rates, now I said this is going to be an annual one, so I'm just going to select this, then I'll keep the column constant, I'm going to keep the column constant, and then for the period, now the current period that I am now, okay, so I need to also do something here as well. So I'm just going to get a period. I need to also get a period here. So I'm just going to say equals to year. Equals to year, I'll select this, press enter. Okay, so I'll change this to number format. And um, I can then highlight to the right and press control and R. Okay, so then I can then proceed. I can proceed. So here will be equals to PPMT. Then what is the rate? This is the rate. I'm just going to uh, lock the column. And then it's asking me for the number of the period. Now, number of period is, uh, so the period where I am, or, or right, that's the period where I am. So to get the period where I am is just by saying this 2018 minus, um, let's say, the issued period, right? Is it the issued period or the maturity date? Okay, I think it's the maturity date. Um, so 2016, okay, yeah, I think it is the this period minus the issued period. So that is F4, F4 minus um, the issued period. And I'm going to press F4, F4, F4. Now, oftentimes when you do this as well, you know, when I want to count from maybe 2016 to 2018, so that will be 2016, 2017, 2018. So what I need to do is now to add one to it. So I'll close the bracket, then I'll add one to it, right? The reason why I'm adding one is so that it will tell me that, okay, that loan from 2016 to 2018 is for three years. So 2016, 2017, and 2018, right? So that's for three years. Then it's asking me that what is the number of period? The number of period is just you doing this as well. So that will be equals to open the bracket. That's this maturity period, which I'm going to lock the column as well, minus the issued period. I'm also going to lock the column, right? I'll close the bracket, then I'll plus one to it as well. Now, then for me to now select the present value, then I'll just say minus, I'll select this present value. I'll also lock the column. 
I will lock the column. I'll lock the column. Then it's asking for the crucial value and all of this. I don't know if we need to do this. And I'll close the bracket and I'll press, I can now press enter. Now I have this right. By the time I highlight to the right, so if I highlight to the right and I press Ctrl R, now by, because this is for how many period now, I'm left with just three period, right? The loan is going to fully be repaid in 2020. And that is why I have num here. So what I'm going to do is, 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 is to just use an if error. So I'm just going to use if error to correct that. I'll say if error. Then by the time it says error, then it just returns zero for me. Then I'll press enter. Okay, I can just press Ctrl R as well. Right, so that's about it. Now I can go to the uh, ending balance as well. The ending balance, ending balance, ending balance. For the ending balance, what I'm going to be using is uh, maybe the comb print, right? The cumulative of a principal. But then before I do this, right, there's a need for me to now do a timing flag, right? I'm going to do a timing flag so that it's going to tell me by the time maybe the loan is fully repaid or not, right? So I need. Um, a flag for that but then i can just make this a total style for now so i can just make this a total style for now so that we know that okay that's going to be our ending balance then i can come here i just come here and have something like um interest expense so maybe i should just type it here okay so then just type here interest expense interest expense interest expense so you have to do interest expense here so you just come here just the same way we did the other one right so for the interest expense that is ipmt right so i'll just say equals to ipmt ipmt just to give me the interest and what is the rate this is the rate then i'm going to lock the column right i'm just going to lock the column and it's asking me for the period so the period is just um, this particular one which i will lock the rule minus the issued period and i'm going to lock the column of course i need to put this into bracket as well so i'm going to open the bracket close the bracket plus one and then it's also asking for the number of period what's the number of period so the number of period is um, i'll open this bracket select this and then i will lock the column i will lock the column minus this particular year i'm also going to lock the column i'll close the bracket then plus one then it's asking for the present value. So I'll say minus this particular value. I'm going to lock the column as well. The official value is zero. Then uh, loan type, I'm going to say, say is zero. Then just to, I mean, of course, by the time we drag to the right, it's going to give me error as well. So to correct that before we press enter, I'm just going to use if error directly here because my time is really, really running. So I'm just going to say, equals to if error then when you encounter error just return zero for me and i'll press enter then i can just highlight this to the right and then i press ctrl r i press ctrl r all right so then i can now do a kind of frame timing as well so i'll just do something like a timing flag now for the period flag because of my time what i plan to do is to do a start period and then an end period but then because of time i'm just going to combine do a combination of that or a lot is he all at the meeting now? Please confirm what time am I to stop? I think um, I'm left with three minutes now. Yeah, you can continue to finish, don't worry. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to have more like a timing period. I'm going to do a timing period. So I'm just going to do a combination of the two, right? I'm just going to do a combination of the two. Now for the period, I'm just going to call it a period mask going to call it a period mask now what i want to check here is that i want a situation whereby it's going to tell me maybe this loan this loan is within this particular period so i just want a flag that will tell me that oh this loan it has been issued this is the this is the end of the loan and all of that remember that i told you when i started that when you're building any uh any debt schedule of course you need to know what is timing and then of course you need to also be be good with the use of a logical function now what most people do is that they just use an, an if statement but then i don't often encourage if statement you can always make it of a logical functions in excel so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to say equals to and right equals to and so i'm just going to say equals to and so i want to do a combination of the two um, i'll be looking at the stats i'll also be looking at the end period so I'm, what i want to check is that i want to see if this loan has actually been issued right so if this loan has been issued so what i'm going to do is that i will say this particular one which i'm going to lock the rule i'm going to lock the rule then i'll say are you greater or equals to the issued period then i'm going to lock the column I'm going to lock the column, right? So that's the first one. Then to now keep track of um, the end, right? To keep track of the end. So I'm just going to select this as well. Now press F4 
and for just to lock the row then i'll say are you less or equal to this maturity period right and then i'm going to press f4 f4 to lock the column then i'll close the bracket and i'll press enter then it's going to tell me true right so if i alight to the right just everything here and i press ctrl r then you see that um this is 2020 right this is 2020 so it's going to end at 2020 and then you can see it here right so it's going to end at 2020 and um at times too i can i kind of do some kind of um, formatting as well so that when i up through i just want to see i just want to see uh it i just do a kind of um, custom formatting so what i do is that i'll come to home i'll come to my custom formatting here and i'll create uh, maybe new rule I'll create a new rule and then I'll say that when it contains, so when my cell contains is equals to one. So when the cell is equals to one, right, I can just do a kind of formatting and then I'll come to fill. What is the pattern fill? Let me say this is going to be green and then I can select uh, maybe this as well. Maybe we can actually use this deep, okay. All right, so which one should I use? Okay, let's just use this, right? And then I click on OK, then I click on OK as well, right? And then I'll do another one so that when it is um, zero, it should just, um, so I'll just do another one for zero as well. So I'll just come to manage rule, then I'll click on new rule, then I'll say that only when cells contain, so when the cell is equals to, let's say it's equals to zero, is equals to zero, then I want it to format it as a red, right? That's the pattern color. I need red, right? And then maybe I should select this as well. Then I'll click on OK. Then I'll click on OK. Now I click on OK. Now the reason why it's not um, happening now is because this is true, right? So all I need to do is now to multiply it by one. So I'm just going to say multiply by one. Then I press Ctrl Enter. Now, of course, you're going to see it now. Now, also, when you're formatting and you're working in Excel, so there's a way you can just format it so that they will not see uh, this one, one, one. Is always, always, I don't want them to see it, right? I'm just going to press Ctrl one. Now, go to my custom formatting. I'll clear this. I'm just going to clear this. I'm just going to clear this. Okay, so I'm just going to clear this. Then I will make it of um, three semicolon, three semicolon, and then I will click on OK. Then of course, I mean they are not saying that the only thing they are saying is just the period, right? Yeah, the period. I mean that's okay. This from 2018 to 2020, right? Of course, 2016 is there, but then 2016 is past. It's not within the frame of um, the model that I'm building, All right? So the next thing I now need to do is now to get this ending balance, and to get the ending balance, I'll be making use of uh, the function that is called um print right so i'm just going to say equal to so i'm just going to make use of the print right i'm going to make use of the uh cumulative of frame principal cumulative of principal so what i'm going to do is that i will just say equals to minus cumulative of um, the principal and i'll start from the rate what is the rate of the loan so this is the rate of the loan this is the rate of the loan i'm going to uh just uh keep the column constant then it's asking me for the number of um, period what's the number of period now the number of period is this also keep the column constant i'll keep the column constant minus this which i'm also going to keep the column constant so i'm going to open and close the bracket just to add one to it close the bracket then i'm just going to add one to this then the next argument is asking me is that what is the uh, present value the present value of the loan is this and i'm just going to hold the column constant as well and then in asking for what is the uh start period right what's the start period what period is it starting from so for me to get the start period i will just say i will just open the bracket then i'm going to select this then i'm going to press um, f4 f4 yes for the rule then i will say minus this particular value here, then I'll press F4, F4 for the column. I'll close that, but here I'm going to add two to it. Then I'll press a comma, then it's asking for the end period. So the end period is also the same thing as uh, maybe the number of period here. So either I can also copy what I have here before, I can just copy what I have here. I'll do Ctrl C, then I'll come to the end here, and then I'll do Ctrl V, I'll do Ctrl V. Then it's asking for the known type, that is just um, zero. Then I close my bracket, and I press, and then because I want, and I want to do, I want, I want to multiply that by the timing. So I'm just saying multiply by what I have here. Then I'll press enter, and I can then highlight this to the right. 
now press control r now to just keep this in focus right what i'm going to do is that i'm i mean to remove that um, non error what i'm going to do is that i will just use if error to re to remove that i'll say equals to if error and i'll say when you encounter error just give me zero then that just about it now for me to now get the principal value right the amount and at the top so i'm just going to do a kind of um, walk back right so it will be more like a walk back a walk back to get the principal so for me to get the prince the beginning balance rider so i'm just going to say equals to this particular value plus the value that i have it and i'll press enter and i can then highlight to the right i will then highlight to the right and then i press ctrl r now you can see this right you can see this so if i just bring it to focus just to bring it back to focus then you can see um just to bring okay i don't know maybe you were able to see this clearly so you can see that okay this is the loan this is as at 2018 right this is the beginning balance as at 2018 remember that it was 5000 that uh, was borrowed but then as at 2018 this happened to be the beginning balance this is the balance this is the balance here and then of course you know when you are doing your beginning balance that will be minus repayment so if you say this minus this of course you're going to have this then this minus this then you're going to have them um, zero as well now what you now want to do is that of course i want to do for 12 loans right i'm going to do for 12 but then i don't want to be repeating this one after i mean one after the other you know the time that i spent building the whole of this but then i don't want to to be doing that i don't want to spend all of those time and then now pressing one two doing three and all of that so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to automate this and then in order to automate this now just to do this as well the name of the loan that is then loan one now to do this the first thing that i need to do is to count how many rules did i even use to build this particular uh, schedule, right? So what I'm going to do is that, and for me to get, if I want to count the number of rows in Excel, what you can, there's a function that you can use to do that, this equals to rows. So I'm going to say equals to rows, equals to rows, and I'm going to highlight from this, and then just to give maybe a single space, and I'll close the bracket and I'll press enter. That means that as I use maybe about um, 11, I mean nine rows, right, to build this particular debt, I use nine nine rows now how many loans do i want to build i want to build for 12 loans and then where did i start from okay i think there is a question there so all right so can i continue or like timidayo yeah you can continue i'll just tell them that the record will be made available as well Okay, uh, apologies. I have to just be fast. I mean, this is three zero six already. Yeah, it's, now it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. Data validation can be an option, right? Where you do a data validation and then you will now be adjusting it and adjusting it. But then just wait and see what I'm going to do. Of course, I can do a data validation here so that I can always, I can just check and say one, two, and three, and four like that. But then just wait and see what I want to do, right? And then I have them here. So the total number of rows is nine. And then I want to bid for 12. And then where did we am I starting from? I'm starting from row 24 and I'll press enter. So what I'm going to do is that I will just say equals to this multiplied by this, which I'm going to maybe put that into brackets. I'll close the bracket, then I'll say plus um, this, then I'll press enter. So that means that I'm going to go to row 132. That's where I'm going to write row 132. So I'm just going to close this and then I'm going to highlight this. So I'm just going to give this and then I will drag it down to row 132. So I'll just come to the edge here and I'll drag to row 132. But then I need to subtract one from it. So I'm just going to go to 131. So I'm just going to go to 131. So when I get 131, I'll just drop it. And of course, I've been able to build for 12 different loans, right? So I've been able to build for 12 different loans, right? I've been able to build for 12 different loans. So if you look at it, so maybe I should just, um, uh, so just to bring this to, so maybe I should um, maybe free spin. Okay, but then let's just, let's just check it, right? Let's just take a look at this. This is 2017, it went in 2020, right? Okay, so, so I'll be able to see the year. Let me just, um, Free spin um, with this work. Um, of, uh, nope. I mean, it will be too. <laughs> uh, WFF. So maybe I should just bring this to the top, right? So that we'll be able to see it. Uh, let me just drag this to the top. Uh, let me just drag this to the top. Uh, drag this to the top. Uh, let's just drag this to the top. 
okay and then maybe i should just highlight this to the right and then i press ctrl r and then uh, maybe i should just come here i can reduce a bit of this and then minus yeah so i can just come here and then do alt w f f all right so if i drag this down now yeah so of course we're able to see it now so for this now you know the loan came uh came in in 2016 and then it went out in 2020. Now, if, if you scroll down as well, if you scroll down, this one came in in 2017, then it went out in 2020, this is 2017, it went out in 2020, and then you can see it. And then if I come down here, like this one came in in 2019, then you can see that the value that came in in 2019 was 4,000. And then, of course, it was fully repaid in 2025. You can see the timing flag, and then you can see that the last amount that was paid was also in 2025 right so if i come down as well so this came in in 2020 what value came in 2020 that is 4000 and it was fully repaid in 2027 so if i scroll right to the right then i can see that it was fully repaid in 2027 all right so that's the limit of it um thank you very much thanks for your time and then i'm open to take your questions now awesome 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 well that was a lot um, so if you have any question, you can raise your hand up so I can make you a speaker. Um, so yeah, can you just, just unmute yourself rather? That's it. I see someone answers up. That's um so unmute yourself and speak. That's all I did made you, right? Allah yes. Yes. Okay. yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to the facilitator. Please, my question is on the single single loan. Okay. Yeah. Please, can you go back to the single loan? Okay. Yeah, for example, now along the line, this is the standard loan, for example, and the loan, you have a restructured loan along the line. Yeah. Say, for example, you started with 20,000. Now, they say you apply for another loan, maybe to be increased to, say, 50,000, um, 50, maybe change yeah. the, the interest rates to be changed, also yeah. the months to be changed. So, mm -hmm. how can we how can we model that? And that is why you have the multiple loans. So what you're going to do is just to have uh, maybe loan one, and then you now have loan two. So you just use a multiple loan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Lord Dimitri, for that. So any other question? Any other question? Well, some of you that have some questions. The recording is also going to be made up today. Okay. Because this one answer is also up. Um, Frank. So Frank, come meet yourself. Hi Frank, you can meet yourself. Um, Frank. Frank, you may want to stop your video as well. I don't know. Maybe that's what is causing. Uh, we can't hear you. Can you, it, you just stop? He's speaking, but it's not coming out. Okay. Um, I think all the major is just still up again. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank that's you. A question. Okay. Thank you. Please, I see you used you used a lot of, of functions um available yeah. on, in Office three sixty five. Yeah, yeah. So what of what about those people that don't have access to Office three sixty five? How can they work, uh, do a workaround using mm. the function? Yeah, yeah. So for those that don't know uh, Office three sixty five, well, I'm sorry, but then maybe <laughs> one thing that you can now do, <laughs> one thing you cannot do is that of course you can also build, you can work with, uh, you you have PMT, you have IPMT, so you can still do this multiple loan, right? Yeah. You have PMT, you have um, IPMT, you have all of those, right? And then you can also do, you know, when I was explaining the other time as well, for a single loan, you can have a situation whereby maybe you you will not just automate it, you will not just automate it. I mean, you won't have this dynamic array. Maybe that's just that's just it. You now have a dynamic array. So what you just do is that after doing it, then you now drag down. Just do a drag down. That's just okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's no work around to sequence at all in in the other version of Excel. Mm, I really do not know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Oh, Thanks so much. much. Okay. 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 Um. Another. Frank, Jans is still up. Are you still asking a question? Hello, hello. Can I hear you? Okay, I can hear you. Perfect, perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, yeah, good afternoon, Frank. Uh, Baba Tete. Sir? Um, I wanted to ask. Thank you for okay. the presentation. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Frank. I wanted to ask, how do you estimate the interest rate? Mm. 
I'm struggling to hear you. So, while you were computing the formula for the principal and the interest, yes, I was following, but at some point I didn't know because I was following you. I used my Excel. I was trying to see things carefully, but I discovered I had an error in the process. I don't know whether it was yeah. because of the schema or something. So I yeah, to Dev. Yeah, definitely, definitely, you're going to encounter error, right? And that was why I had to make use of an if error to correct that. So what you're just going to use is that you make use of if error to correct that, and then with that, you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Awesome. Okay, so someone is asking if I will be sharing this for it's learning format. purpose. So maybe I should just save this. I, is it possible to share? I'm not sure I can share yeah, from here. Maybe. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll just message you on LinkedIn so you can just give me the folder. Yeah, I'm just going to the... save this. Yeah, I'm just okay. going to save this and then send that to you. So with that, you'll be good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I've also dropped the link to the YouTube channel. So by this time tomorrow, the video should be made available on YouTube. So for some of you that were paying attention, you also to practice when you get home. You can always watch the YouTube channel. And, and then just to, uh, uh, apologies, um, just to add as well, there are some further reading as well that I've included here. So for further reading, uh, let me just type. I will just send those link now so that you can uh, you can just take some other reading. And I know that in your BIS Edge as well, they will have some videos on um, on all of those on their on their YouTube page as well. So you can also go to their yeah. YouTube page to also learn as well. Of course, there are a really lot of things that to learn. And then, of course, uh, I've also learned from uh, Michael Olafusi as well. I mean, one of his um, articles online was that he actually started um, even working on models before he wrote the FMI exam. And that was actually <laughs> encouraging. I mean, I mean, that's actually encouraging. So, so I've learned a lot from I've learned a lot from him as well. Oh. So please, you can visit their page. You can visit their page, visit their YouTube um a page as well to learn. So I've sent links to different videos, I mean, to different uh, materials that you can also use here. So yeah, so people are also learn from as well. So you can take this course in LinkedIn, on LinkedIn rather. So it's Excel Financial Function In-Depth Online Class. You're gonna learn a whole lot of um, Excel uh, functions relating to finance, right? You're gonna learn a whole lot. And then here at Different Consulting, we've done, um, let debt schedule before, but we've not done amortization. So of course, you obviously you brought me out to do the <laughs> amortization debt, right? So <laughs> yeah, so I was able to do that. And then you can also learn from um, from uh, Jeff Learning as well. So Jeff Learning did a video on a single loan. So there's no multiple loan, right? There's no multiple loan there. So yeah, I think uh, your PC has so uh, multiple loan now. So so that's just about it. That's just about it. So you, please, you can awesome, proceed. Uh, awesome, you can proceed, awesome. Yeah. Uh, this is just too many, too many informations for today. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I know I'm going way beyond time, but um, I want, the last two questions, right? I started your finance journey and also what advice you have for people just starting out in the field? You can just use like three minutes and can round up. Okay, so I started my finance journey. Well, actually, I studied economics, right? <laughs> and then it wasn't easy to to cross to finance, right? But then, I mean, people that are of encouragement to me, uh, I mean, you see somebody who studied English in school or studied something related to engineering, and the person is, uh, is a chartered accountant already, and then you'll be like, wow. So even myself that did a bit of business in school, that why not go into this? So I actually... Uh, came into finance, that was in 2019. And then I started working on models, like started building models around 2021. That was when I started working on models, right? So that means that uh, if you look at me here, yeah, now maybe I'll be the, I mean, the person with the youngest experience, right? <laughs> but then I joined in with uh, different consulting and from there I've been able to learn as well. I've also joined a couple of uh, webinars hosted by your Biz Edge. Uh, yes, on Sundays, yes, so I used to join um, some of the webinars as well. And then I also try to learn online as well from those platforms that I've sent to you. So I try to learn uh, from there. So that's, I mean, those things that I try to do. But then coming into finance, it wasn't easy. It was, I mean, I had to do a really lot of learning and learning and learning just to make sure that um, I'm out there. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then maybe to mention, to add to that as well, I belong to several communities as well. Um, uh, I belong to the Full Stack Modelers. So if you want to join that community, it's just $1,950 to join. It's, a, it's, a, it's an annual subscription. You can also join that community as well. Project Finance Institute is a free community that you can join. 
Uh, maybe I should also send that link before I go. So it's actually a free community that you can join, Project Finance Institute. It's free to join, so you can join that community as well to learn. And then also, I'm also in the Financial Modeling Institute community as well. I also belong to the Nigeria Excel user group, so you learn a bit of Excel there as well. So it's just a bit of learning, learning, and learning. But you can join the Project Finance Institute. It's actually very, it's free, and they host webinars as well. And of course, you can join the Obis Edge community as well. You're going to learn a lot. Go to their YouTube page. Go to their YouTube page. You are really going to learn a lot. I was looking at, um, that was yesterday, right? Uh, Z, what was the name of this guy? Sigbemi. I was looking at a video by Sigbe Me when he was trying to hide um, a particular worksheet, right, using VBA. So all of those things are things that you can also learn from your Beast Edge uh, YouTube platform. So it's just about learning, learning and learning. Oh, wow, wow, uh, so, are, so people are asking for the link that you sent the link. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, I'm okay. going to do that. I'm going to do that now. So it's actually a free community to okay. join. You, you enjoy, you enjoy them as well. Okay. And then Thank I think they also much. give you. Yeah, they also give you two free courses. They give you their essentials of financial modeling for free. They also give you data visualization for free as well. Awesome, 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 awesome. So I think we'll be wrapping up very soon. So Mike, I think I'll stop recording because we're having another section by four. So we'll have to start preparing for the next section. Oh, okay. okay, I can see Chidi and okay, Chidi hands are up. Chidi, commit yourself. Yeah, so I was just wondering, um, have you, is it popular to uh, automate all of